In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. How incomprehensible are his judgments, and unsearchable are his ways. The why of God is one of the greatest mysteries in our life. And most times in our life, we will never fully know the why. So much time, so much energy, so many tears, so much pain and heartache are caused by us searching for the answer to this why. So much time spent on searching this mystery. Why God? Why have you sent me this cross? Why does that person seem to have an easy life? Why do they get everything they could ever want, whilst I am struggling every day? Why me, God? Why take my child? Why do I not get that job? I prayed, I did everything I was supposed to do, and yet I still didn't get what I wanted, what I say I needed. But we will never fully understand the why of God. We will never fully know why this path was chosen, why this cross was given. We will never know in this life. But what we do know in this life is that every single cross we are given, every single blessing, every little thing and every great thing that happens to us is a result of God's providence and all is directed towards our eternal salvation. Whether we feel it or not, whether we can understand it fully or not, we believe it because we know God is perfect and we know he wants our salvation. And is there really a greater source of peace or consolation than to know no matter how much I know, how much I understand, I can be sure, absolutely sure, that no matter what I may think I need, how harsh, harshly I may be being treated, how many crosses I have been given, I can be unwavering in my confidence in God, knowing he is in control, knowing that he is allowing everything to happen to me, that he will help me, and he will use it all as the best means of saving my soul. All I need to do is surrender. Surrender myself to God's will. Life's greatest act of trust is made by accepting without question the clause that follows the why. The why should I? One way in which we ask why of God is by simply refusing to pick up the cross he's asking us to bear. We just simply do all we can to avoid it. We refuse to pick it up. And the ironic thing is, the more we avoid the cross, the more we ask why, 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 the more our suffering, the more our confusion normally increases. Imagine a child and their parent. Their parent tells their child they need to come inside for dinner. But the child is having fun. The child doesn't see any need to come inside. And so he refuses. The parent tells him again to come inside. The child shouts, why? I am having fun. I do not want to come inside. And so they run further away from the house. The parent may even go outside and try to get them to come inside by physically ushering them in. But the child continues to hide. Firstly, we would think what a brat that child is. The parent was just doing what was best for them, trying to make sure they were nourished. But the child could not see beyond themselves, beyond their own pleasure here and now. And the child did not have enough respect for their parent, enough fear, enough love to not question and just to obey what they were being told. 
But how often are we like this child with God, our Father? How often does he call us inside? How often does he call us away from what we want to do? And we react, we react just like the child. Refusing to heed his command, refusing to bear the cross he is asking of us. How often do we pray about a certain situation, whether it be about work or something at home with our family or a situation with friends? How often do we pray to know God's will and then we just get that moment of grace, that inspiration in our souls that we cannot explain but that we, clear, but that we know clearly tells us, okay, this is what I must do. For example, should I go out for dinner with friends or should I stay back and prepare for my presentation tomorrow at work? Your due recreation, but you have a feeling it is not the most prudent thing to do because it will go too long. You will come back later in the evening and be tired, too tired to work on the presentation. So you pray about it. And you get a feeling that says, no, I really should just stay at home. But you have a feeling almost of sorrow, of loss at the thought of not having fun, of not going with your friends. Now you clearly know the will of God, but you say, why? Why not God? Why shouldn't I have some fun? And so you go out anyway, you avoid the cross, you avoid the sacrifice. Now you may ace the presentation the next day, you may get all the praise in the world from your employers, but you failed. You failed because you asked God why. You failed because you avoided your cross. The okay, but why? The second way in which we ask God why is when we appear to accept the crosses which he sends us, when we accept his providence, but then complain the whole time. We deceive ourselves into thinking we are carrying our cross successfully, when in fact we are slowly letting it crush us. It is a lot easier to recognise our big crosses in life and we can normally see clearly when we are not accepting them with complete surrender. We understand the big crosses are difficult and so we more easily see our weakness in relation to them. In a sense, we understand that with regards to the big things, we want control but can never have it. And we know that is difficult for us. We know that we so often ask God why with regards to our big crosses. As the saying goes, better the devil you know. And so often we can tackle our large crosses because we know we need to do better in coping with them. However, it is the small things, the small crosses in life, the work of God's providence in our daily lives that we struggle with even more. For example, when we are asked to do something either at work, school or at home, whatever it may be, you think it is completely unreasonable, illogical, or just plain stupid and pointless. You do it, but the whole time you complain in silence, you tell yourself how stupid it is, how unreasonable the person is being. And yet later, you can convince yourself that you were obedient, that you did what you were told. But you see, you didn't fully accept the cross. You were asking why of God with every complaint and with every contradiction in your mind. We need to understand not God's why, but our own why. Why do we not accept our crosses? Why are we miserable? Why do we feel like life is a constant battle 
a constant struggle without any peace, without any respite. We should begin by asking ourselves, do I accept God's why without question? Only then will you have peace if you accept God knows best, God wants my salvation and he knows how best to help me achieve it. And every little thing that happens to me in this life happens for a reason. It happens because God allows it to happen. And what he allows is only for my greater good. The moment we stop asking why of God, we are free to start asking how of ourselves. How can I love God more? How can I conform better to his will? By asking how of ourselves, we will learn to not ask why of God. We will undoubtedly face many trials of varying difficulty in our life. But if we ask how, how do you want me to proceed, God? How do you want me to react? How can I love you more? How can I do your will? Then will you be truly pleasing to God. It's funny because the answer to the why of God will be found when we ask ourselves these hows. In the Old Testament, Abraham was asked by God to sacrifice his son Isaac. He did not say to God why, but asked of himself how. How can I obey God's command? How can I show I love God? The how consisted in surrender without question. And that's what Abraham did. And that's what we must do. How incomprehensible are his judgments and unsearchable are his ways. Stop asking why of God. You will never understand perfectly why he took that life, why he sent that cross, why he put that person in charge, or why you lost that job. And the precise why does not matter. Because you can always rest assured knowing that the answer to the why is perfect. That the answer to the why is exactly what you need for your salvation because the infinite and perfect God has ordained it to be. We need to stop asking why of God and start asking how of ourselves. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.